today I'm here to talk about uh, something a bit different. Um, regarding the main movie I'm going to talk about, I, uh, I realize I, I don't really have a whole lot to say uh, about it uh, in terms of the film itself. Um, uh, though there is some stuff I want to talk about regarding it, as well as some uh, facts, of course, uh, regarding it, as it has to pertain to a, another movie that I have already talked about and I will talk again later this month, um, but uh, when I do, uh, <clears throat> I won't be in you know, this room because I'll be in Florida when I've uh, watched it uh, on the big screen. That film that I will watch again will be Citizen Kane. It will be 80 years old. This is the 70th anniversary edition that I have. Um, and the film that I'm going to uh, essentially talk about is Mank. Uh, the film that stars uh, Gary Oldman and um, uh, directed by David Fincher. Um, I'm going to be looking over here at my uh, computer which has these uh, notes that I'm going to uh, essentially uh, uh, just read from. So apologies in advance for not really looking at the uh, camera, uh, addressing you, the uh, people, but uh, I will do my best to ensure I do look back here every so often uh, to sort of keep the overall flow and the general overall of, of basically whatever I, I, I do, like, you know, just always looking at the camera and stuff. Because um, as of now, I don't have the uh, movie Mank in Blu-ray. It has not yet been released on Blu-ray, uh, if it ever will. Uh, it's, uh, you know, streaming on Netflix, and um, it's an original film from Netflix. I've also... Um, I actually got to see it in theaters because it was nominated nominated for Best Picture and they often have Best Picture nominees released in various theaters around uh, America, at least. I'm not sure about the rest of the world, but I know in America they do that in certain theaters. Um, and so, cause, because Mink was nominated for Best Picture, I got to see it on the big screen. Um, and that was a cool experience. Um, so, um... I just want to get all that out of the way before, you know, I get into it. And I also do talk about Mank a bit here and there throughout this uh, stuff I read, So, which I think is a bit better than me just rambling on about it. Um, I did rewatch it uh, not too long ago, but my thoughts are still the same. They haven't changed much, so I won't be adding anything really new that I haven't uh, put in here. You know, it had been a while since I updated because I wanted to make this for a while, um, but because I didn't, um, I'm just going to uh, read as is, and I will get back to looking at you guys in a moment. So, my thoughts on Mank and the Citizen King script, because that's what the film is about, is about the writing of it. And from the film's perspective, it's all about Mankiewicz, and you don't really get to see, you know, Orson Welles' side of it. He comes in here and there to talk to Mank, either he's on the phone or he's in person. But, you know, you, you know, he isn't a, a, a huge, like, main character. He's not, like, a big supporting role in the film, for those who haven't seen it. Um, also, spoilers ahead because of this. Um, so, my thoughts on Mank and the Citizen Kane script. Last year I saw Mank uh, directed uh, by David Fincher, and while I initially wanted to discuss my thoughts on the film, when I realized I didn't have much or too much to say about the film, outside of saying, you know, I enjoy Mank for the story it tells as well as the performances particularly Gary Oldman's portrayal of Herman Mankiewicz. Uh, 
And I'll just give my thoughts here and there about it, the film, uh, regarding any inaccuracies main cast. But I do want to discuss more about the script controversy uh, that is well known and has been, uh, and was even like, you know, teased by the end of the film. Uh, while the film goes back and forth between the president of, president of Mank, like, you know, like in Mank, you know, the pre president in the past, sort of like in a similar style of Citizen Kane, like that timeline of going back and forth. Um, one thing that bugged me is the framing of the film's overarching conclusion implicating that, uh, or the implication of Mankiewicz sort of doing all the writing of Citizen Kane and then Orson Welles took credit for co-writing the film when he just starred, directed, and produced the film as we never see Welles write anything. Even in the final time, we see Mankiewicz and Wells together, they have a discussion that becomes heated when Wells hears Manx wants credit for the film, as he did in reality, wrote more than initially was contracted to contribute. All we see of Wells, for the most part, is him checking in on Mankiewicz whenever he calls him to see how things are going, what the material he's working on. Um, but the truth is that, uh, Wells did write Citizen Kane. And I believe David Fincher knows this, but since the script was written by his late father, Jack Fincher, he wanted to honor his dad and bring his script to the big screen, while also polishing it as to try and reflect the reality of the situation a bit, but leaving his father's words as intact as possible. You know, it's, you, can, you know, that obviously, you know, this has been a big uh, topic of debate for so many years um, of who wrote what. Um, and I'll get into that in a little bit. But, you know, I do think it's important to mention how the f the film of Mank was written by Jack Fincher, you know, again, the, the David Fincher's father. Um, he wanted to uh, make that into a movie died before he ever got to see it be, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, become a movie, and so, you know, David decided he's gonna do what he can to make sure his father's, uh, film, uh, his script gets to be made into a film, and so, on that, uh, note, you know, that's very respectable and admirable of, it, of David Fincher. Um, and I do think that he does know and have a good clue of what uh, the reality of the situation was, especially as time has gone on and we actually know for a fact that, yes, Orson Welles did write the film. He co-wrote it, and again, I'll get into that more in just a moment, but, you know, they both wrote the movie. Elements of their scripts exist in the movie. Um, so, now the two began to work on the script when they were on an agreement of what the story would be, and the two then wrote scripts on their own. Mankiewicz wrote his two drafts in the desert, which was then typed by a secretary, and Wells wrote five drafts in Hollywood, also with his secretary and on hand to type. <clears throat> In fact, uh, Mankiewicz was hired to be a script doctor, actually signed a contract that relinquished his rights to a screen credit, but he eventually got shared credit with Orson Welles. And in the end, Welles took the best elements from his scripts and Mankiewicz's scripts, so that uh, they both got credit, despite Mankiewicz being hired as a script doctor and, you know, all that stuff that I just said, you know sign something that would relinquish his con uh, his uh, rights to ever have a credit on the movie. Um, he still got credit at the end anyway. Um, no. <clears throat> and this whole uh, thing of him signing the contract to relinquish his 
approach to the screen credit uh, wasn't uh, mentioned at all in the Mank film. Even when shooting the uh, Citizen Kane, uh, Wells was dictating dialogue to a secretary while having makeup on or before making a scene. You know, he would rewrite what was previously written and would change it to make it better. Now, as mentioned, Mankiewicz was paid to be a script doctor for Wells to help further flesh out the idea for Citizen Kane, which was originally titled American, but that his contributions led him writing a script that was so long, originally 250 pages, that a second draft uh, was made, and that made him have to uh, condense quite a bit of what he included, so it would be more reasonable length to put uh, together for a film to be shot. The thing is, due to Orson Welles' larger-than-life personality we're all familiar with these days, the claims of Orson Welles taking credit for something he didn't do doesn't seem, you know, too out of the realm of possibility. Which is a, which is true, you know, he did have quite a big personality, you know, larger than life, um, but he also was quite quiet and all that, but he was at the same time very outgoing, and you know, it's, you know, he could be quite quiet whenever he wanted to be, but he could also be very know out there um, one thing I like to mention here as I'm not sure I'd remember if I didn't say so now is that uh, Herman Mankiewicz was a known conservative in the industry and you know there's many scenes which seem to contradict that all the scenes where Manx seems to be anti-Republican and sympathetic towards socialist umpted St. Clair is very unrealistic. Mankiewicz hated socialism, and in particular Hitler, even as so far as writing an anti-socialist play called The Mad Dog of Europe. The play was about the mistreatment of Jews in Germany, and was also a commentary about the socialist government Germany was, was at the time. The movie rights to the play were bought, but it was never made into a movie because of George uh, Gleasing. Uh, I might have I probably mispronounced that, so apologies to any German viewer or somebody who knows German very well. George Gleasing, uh, a German diplomat at the time, threatened to ban all American films from releasing in Germany if the Mad Dog of Europe was made. So, you know, this is a big thing in the film. You know, it seems like he's very liberal. You know, Herman Mankiewicz is liberal and all that and sympathetic to socialism. The reality is he was quite the opposite. Hated socialism. He's not at all liberal. He was very conservative. Um, so, you know, is also Jewish, which would also uh, uh, make sense for the Mad Dog of Europe to be really about the mistreatment of Jews during that time. Uh, so, uh, you know, I wanted to just address that just so for anybody who has seen the movie can you know watch rewatch it again one sometime and realize that all that stuff is in completely made up it would have never have happened you know that's just it just it just wouldn't happen uh it did not happen in reality so i thought that was very important to um include here um and i thought that was a good time as any to put that into this these notes um now a lot of the controversy came back in the 1970s when Pauline Kael wrote a book on the making of Citizen Kane titled Raising Kane, this, the Citizen Kane book. I wrote a chapter about the writing of the script and made all these claims against Whale or Wells that really began to take shape, which presented, which it, it is persisted to this very day. People still believe it. Um, and it's as evident in the fact that the original script of Mank had to be polished to try and 
not be so against Orson Welles as it seemed to have been t ended to show Herman Mankiewicz himself was the sole writer of the film. Uh, I've often believed there was always a stigma against Orson Welles back then due to the fact that he was given free reign over his first film, which was oh, unheard of. You know, it was unheard of back then, and it still is uh, unheard of today. Making one's first movie, um, you know, for Hollywood, you don't really get to have complete creative control and have the studio have absolutely no say in anything. Uh, director gets final cut, so the studio can't make any cuts no matter what because the contract that has been signed and agreed to says the director gets the final cut, and if the director's work is tampered, they could then face a lawsuit, which would not be very good, obviously. And so, because of that, that's such a rare thing to ever see. Um, it doesn't really happen at all. You know, maybe occasionally you'll see something like that happen, but it's so, so rare that it's still basically unheard of to this day. Um, so, uh, you know, I've always sort of thought there was a stigma against Wells, really from the get-go. Uh, you know, he was not only the lead actor on the film, but the writer, producer, and director of Citizen Kane, and didn't have this studio interference so many others would have had. Um, the end product was all Wells' vision, and our KO didn't change anything in the, uh, to the film. Mankiewicz was a great writer, but he seemed to have burned bridges with his antics, uh, you know, due to his antics with drinking, which the film Mank did get right. You know, you do see stuff with him being drunk and, you know, doing things, kind of acting like a fool and all this. And so, you know, that, you know, is right. It is correct. Um, uh, Mankiewicz's friends came to his defense later on regarding who wrote, wrote what and said Mankiewicz wrote everything himself and Wells just bullied his way to, to a screenplay credit. Now, people know about William Randolph Hearst's um, campaign uh, about the making of uh, making sure Citizen Kane never got mentioned in his newspapers for promotion, and if they did feature the film at all, it would always be negative, regardless of the fact if the person writing about writing an article or something that mentioned Citizen Kane actually liked it or not. I'm going to write a little bit about the relationship between the two writers and Hearst. Herman Mankiewicz did know William Randolph Hearst and uh, Marion Davies, but Wells didn't really know uh, Hearst all that much. It's been said that they all he knew him very well. Um, you know, and Orson Wells himself said with a conversation with uh, Peter Bogdanovich that you know he be met him once. Uh, but Orson Wells, his father, was very good friends with his dad, yeah, or his dad was very good friends with Hearst. Um, he went to his place once and saw this all the cool stuff that uh, you know Hearst had in his house and how huge it was. Um, um, Wells' father was friends with Hearst, and Wells really met and talked with you know Hearst a few times in his life prior to making. Citizen Kane, um, but you know, he did see his uh, place really once from what I could tell and found out from what not only what Willis said but other things. But you know, he did meet Hearst a few times here and there. Um, sorry if I, my talking or not reading, kind of might have seemed like, oh, he only met him once. Well, you know, he went to his pl house once. But he met him a few times here and there, not a whole lot, you know, before he made Citizen Kane. You know, in fact, all the things 
you know, where Charles Foster's cane resembles anything like hers is from, you know, primarily it's basically Rankowitz's script. As uh, Wells himself said, Cain is an amalgamation of different people that he both knew and knew of, which is true for other characters in the film. And since he did write five other drafts of the script and polished up what Mankiewicz wrote, the Hearst characterization may have been more obvious in the first two drafts uh, written by uh, Mankiewicz. You know, it is now combined with many more people to have create one character. Wells also said the character of Susan Alexander Kane was not at all based on Davies, but since people noticed some similarities of Kane with Hearst, people made the connection between Alexander and Davies, particularly with the two, you know, ending up together uh, in the film. Um, he says, you know, there it was never intended, but you know, there are similarities, and he even conceded, yeah, there are some similarities, but that was never the whole point. The point was, you know, you know, he has an affair, and then he continues the affair throughout his whole life, sort of like uh, William Randolph Hearst uh, did with Mary Davies all while, you know, he's, you know, still, like, married. Uh, so, at the very end, uh, Mank is a fine film. Uh, the performances are great. The direction is very good. Of course, with all the controversy with the script, I can definitely see why uh, one may not want to see Orson Welles deserving credit for writing the film, particularly with the reputation he had back then and even now to this day. A man who was larger than life in many ways, um, who is the lead actor, writer, director, and producer of his film is quite a feat. Uh, surely he is exaggerating to an extent of the work he, you know, so surely he must be exaggerating the work that he did on, uh, on the film, and why not single out the screenplay, which does have two writers credited on it, when he clearly had to write more than the other, um, and due to this controversy, when Citizen Kane was nominated for nine Academy Awards and nine at the 1942 Oscars, the film was booed every time the film's name was mentioned due to Hearst's smear campaign against the film. The film only won one Academy Award, Best Original Screenplay for Herman Mankiewicz and Orson Welles. Of course, the film today is seen as one of the best films of all time and is often called the greatest film of all time. Uh, particularly by the AFI, who rank it at number one. Uh, on the list of a hundred uh, films. Uh, we look back and talk about how Orson Welles deserved Best uh, Actor and Best Director, as well as the film itself should have won Best Picture. But with all that went on with the controversy of the screenplay, which people say it was uh, mainly for you know the Oscar for the screenplay uh, was in a way for Hollywood you know, it was really for Mankiewicz you know it was really his Oscar it just happened that Wills shared credit and also wrote the movie so the film was that that award was really Mankiewicz's award and it was sort of a Paula uh, sort of an apology of sorts for uh, Hollywood casting him out due to his drinking. And Wells won uh, due to just getting credit with him. Uh, all while, because of the controversy with Hearst, he didn't win the other Oscars he was nominated for. Um, it is uh, revered as one of the greatest films of all time for, you know, for so many reasons. And it is deserving of the title that it has for being so great. It was a collaborative effort spearheaded by Orson Welles. And he had many people help him make the movie as great as it was. Including Herman Mankiewicz uh, as his co-writer. And um, 
yeah, a film of Mank is a, is a fine film. Um, at the Academy Awards, of course, you know, I did want Gary Oldman to win, you know, not only because he's my favorite actor, but I just generally believe he did the best job of that year, of 2020 in terms of the best actor category. Um, Anthony Hopkins was very good in, um, you know, um, in The Father, though, so, you know, it wasn't a complete, you know, like a real head-scratcher as to why, uh, Gary Oldman lost, or you know, even Chadwick Boseman lost for Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, which many people thought he would win, because he was winning, like, pretty much all the awards, except for the BAFTA, which also went to Anthony Hopkins, um, but, you know, the film, the Mank is fine, um, if Criterion ever, uh, releases the movie, I'll, I'll probably buy it, um, you know, they have, uh, a deal with, uh, Netflix to release, uh, some of their movies on, uh, Blu-ray, The Irishman was one that I got, um, I don't have, obviously have it behind me like I normally would, because I have it over there, because I was, you know, watching it, I just haven't put it back yet, um, but yeah, Mink is a fine movie, um, but at the end of it all, I thought, you know, what am I going to say? Acting is good. Yeah, you know, it's not the best David Fincher film. Um, I think it's Zodiac. I know a lot of people say it's The Social Network. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of The Social Network. Um, I think the story of The Social Network is fine. Um, it's just, for me, the execution wasn't that great. And I'm probably in the, in the minority on that, and that's fine. Um... But that's just my thoughts on that film. As well as, you know, this isn't the best film Fincher has done. It, you know, it's a it's really a tribute of sorts. Um, it's a fine film. Uh, yeah. Not really much else to say, really. Um... Good performances, direction's fine, uh, but, you know, facts aren't all there. Certain things are twisted and changed just enough to, you know, suit the purpose of the story. Um, which, you know, is fine if this was a fictional film, but because it's not, and you can find out quite a bit of, uh, of the movie, about the making of the movie uh, these days, um, I think the script should have been polished a bit more to reflect uh, the actual, you know, real life of it. Uh, and I guess you could say, well, you know, it wasn't completely, you know, um, accurate because, you know, you know, films based on true stories aren't always accurate, and that's true. But certain things, like, you know, Mank being seen as a liberal and sympathetic towards socialism, I think definitely should have not have happened. He was a very conservative person, and I think, you know, the film should have reflected that. You know, Oldman himself, I'm sure, would have played that just as well. And, um, you know, so in a way, it wasn't, you know, like, part of his downfall wasn't because of politics exactly because you know there were a decent number of people who were you know politically right wing and i know there's a lot of people who say you know these days you know hollywood is very left wing which is quite true um uh, but it's also true that it was left very left wing even back then though i guess perhaps it was there were some more prominent uh people who were conservative back then worked at these studios, regardless if they were the heads of studios or not, um, but yeah, uh, that's really all I have to say on the matter of Mankin, uh, Citizen Gaines script, uh, uh, next time I will be talking about the 80th anniversary of Citizen Kane, um, I'll be in Florida, and I'll be sure to 
make a video. It might not be a long video. It might be up uh, later today when you see this video. Uh, considering that it is the last Friday of September, so um, I think it would be nice to do that and then have October be predominantly, you know, horror films and such. Um, yeah. So, be on the lookout some hours later for my thoughts on seeing Citizen Kane on the big screen for the first time. Um, I'm looking forward to it, and it should be fun. So, take care. I uh, hope everybody is having a great day, having a great weekend, and I uh, hope you all have a great week. See you all next time.